like getting new clothes? Do you enjoy getting dressed up in different outfits for special occasions? Or perhaps you're one of those people who really doesn't much care for clothes and are more interested in other things. Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. Today's tale is a very old fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen about an emperor, which is just another name for someone who rules over the country, whose fondness for new clothes lands him in quite a pickle. Mums, dads, grandparents, teachers, all of you grown-ups, are you enjoying these stories for your little ones on my podcast? If so, do visit my website at www.kathleenpelly.com for information on how to purchase one of my own award-winning published books. Let's take a journey then with The Emperor's New Clothes. Many years ago, there was an emperor so exceedingly fond of new clothes that he spent all his money on being elaborately dressed. He took no interest in inspecting his soldiers, going to the theatre or taking a drive in his carriage unless it was to show off his fine new clothes. He had a different robe for every hour of the day and instead of saying as one might about any other ruler, the king is in his council, here the people always said, the emperor is in his dressing room. In the great city where he lived, life always hummed along with a happy hustle bustle and strangers coming and going. But one day, two swindlers arrived in the town, intending to make themselves rich through their cunning trickery. They told everyone that they were weavers and that they could weave the most magnificent cloth anyone could imagine. And not only were the colours and the patterns unusually beautiful, but the clothes that were made from this material were actually invisible. Yes, that is what those two swindlers tricked everyone into believing. They claimed that the only people who would be able to actually see these clothes were people who were either inexcusably stupid or unfit for their jobs. Those would be just the clothes for me, thought the emperor. If I wore them, I would be able to discover which men in my empire are unfit for their jobs, and I could tell the wise men from the fools. Yes, I certainly must get some of the stuff woven for me right away. So, he paid the two swindlers a huge sum of money to start work at once. The two men set up two looms and pretended to start to weave, even though there was nothing on the looms. They even ordered bolts of fine silk and pure gold threads, which they stuffed into their own bags, and then late into the night they worked at their empty looms. I'd like to know how those weavers are getting on with their work, the emperor thought, but he felt slightly uneasy when he remembered that those who were unfit for their position would not be able to see the fabric. And for fear that he himself might not see the cloth, he decided to send someone else in his place. After all, the whole town knew about the cloth's peculiar power and all were impatient to find out how stupid their neighbours were. I'll send my honest old Chamberlain to the weavers, the emperor decided. He'll be the best one to tell me how the material looks, for he's a sensible man and no one does his duty better. So, the honest old chamberlain went to the room where the two swindlers sat working away at their empty looms. Heaven help me, he thought, as his eyes flew wide open. I can't see anything at all. But he did not say so. Both the swindlers begged him to be so kind as to come nearer to approve the exquisite pattern and radiant colours. They pointed to the empty looms and the poor old minister stared as hard as he dared. He couldn't see anything, because there was nothing to see. Oh, heaven have mercy, he thought. Can it be that I'm a fool? I'd have never guessed it, and not a soul must know. Am I unfit to be the minister? 
It would never do to admit that I can't see that cloth. Don't hesitate to tell us what you think of it, said one of the weavers. Oh, it's beautiful. It's enchanting. The old minister peered through his spectacles. Oh, such a pattern. What colours. I'll be sure to tell the emperor how delighted I am with it. Ah, oh, we are pleased to hear that, the swindler said. They proceeded to name all the colours and to explain the intricate pattern in great detail. The old minister paid the closest attention so that he could repeat it all exactly to the emperor when he came home. And he did. The swindlers now immediately demanded even more money, more silk and more gold thread in order to continue the weaving. Once more they kept everything for themselves and not a single thread appeared on the looms while they kept working on the empty frames as before. Soon after this the emperor sent another trustworthy official to see how the work was progressing and how soon it would be ready. Exactly the same thing happened to him as to the chamberlain. He looked and he looked, but as there was nothing to see in the looms, he couldn't see anything. Isn't it a beautiful piece of goods? The swindlers asked him as they displayed and described their imaginary pattern. I know I'm not stupid, the man thought, so it must be that I'm unworthy of my good office. That's strange. I mustn't let anyone find it out, though. So he praised the material he did not see. He declared he was delighted with the beautiful colours and the exquisite pattern. And to the emperor, he said, It helped me spellbound. All the town was now talking of this splendid cloth, and the emperor was eager to see it for himself while it was still in the looms. So, attended by a band of chosen men, among whom were his two old trusted officials, the ones who had been to the weavers, he set out to see the two swindlers. He found them weaving with might and main, but without a thread in their looms. Magnificent, said the two officials, already duped. Just look, Your Majesty, what colours, what a design! And they pointed to the empty looms, each supposing that the others could see the stuff. What's this? thought the Emperor. I can't see anything. This is terrible. Am I a fool? Am I unfit to be the Emperor? What a thing to happen to me, of all people. Oh, it is very pretty, he said. It has my highest approval. And he nodded approbation at the empty loom. Nothing could make him say that he couldn't see anything. His whole retinue stared and stared. One saw no more than another. But they all joined the emperor in exclaiming, It's very pretty. And they advised him to wear clothes made of this wonderful cloth, especially for the great procession he was soon to lead. Magnificent! Excellent, unsurpassed, were bandied from mouth to mouth, and everyone did his best to seem well pleased. The emperor gave each of the swindlers a cross to wear it in his buttonhole, and the title of Sir Weaver. Before the procession, the swindlers sat up all night and burned more than six candles to show how busy they were finishing the emperor's new clothes. They pretended to take the cloth off the loom. They made cuts in the air with huge scissors. And at last they said, Now the emperor's new clothes are ready for him. When the emperor himself came with his noblest noblemen, the swindlers each raised an arm as if they were holding something, and they said, These are the trousers, here's the coat, and this is the mantle, naming each garment. All of them are as light as a spider's web. One would almost think he had nothing on, but that's exactly what makes them so fine. Exactly, all the noblemen agreed, though they could see nothing, for there was nothing to see. If your imperial majesty will condescend to take your clothes off, said the swindlers, we will help you on with your new ones here in front of the long mirror. The emperor undressed, and the swindlers pretended to put his new clothes on him, one garment after another. They took him around the waist and seemed to be fastening something that was his train as the emperor turned around and round before the looking glass. Ah, oh, how well your majesty's new clothes look. Aren't they becoming? He heard on all sides. That pattern is so perfect. Those colours so suitable. It is a magnificent outfit. Then the minister of public processions announced... 
your majesty's canopy is waiting outside. Well, I'm supposed to be ready, the emperor said, and turned again for one last look in the mirror. It is a remarkable fit, isn't it? He seemed to regard his costume with the greatest interest. The noblemen who were to carry his train stooped low and reached for the floor as if they were picking up his mantle, and then they pretended to lift and hold it high. They didn't dare admit they had nothing to hold. So off went the emperor in procession under his splendid canopy. Everyone in the streets and the windows said, Oh, how fine are the emperor's new clothes? Don't they fit him to perfection? And look at his long train. Nobody would confess that he couldn't see anything, for that would prove him either unfit for his position or a fool. No costume the emperor had worn before was ever such a complete success. But he hasn't got anything on, a little child said. Did you ever hear such innocent prattle, said his father. And one person whispered to another what the child had said. He hasn't got anything on. A child says he hasn't got anything on. But he hasn't got anything on, the whole town cried out at last. The emperor shivered for he suspected they were right. But he thought, this procession has got to go on. So he walked more proudly than ever as his noblemen held high the train that wasn't there at all. Well, that emperor was rather vain and very foolish, wouldn't you agree? Do you think anyone could ever trick you into believing something that wasn't true? Do you think if you were that child in the crowd that you too would have spoken up and told the truth? Sometimes young children are much better than grown-ups at speaking out and saying exactly what they think. Lots of ideas here to discuss with your mums and your dads, your friends, your teachers. Cheerio then. Join me next time for Journey with Stories.